if you already understand that you want spiritual development and you want to start going in that route and you want to understand how to do it, like the questions we had before, then this will help you understand that. So, there is a human emergent state. And Kabbalists are the scientists that have found a way to tap into it. In this final video, we're finally going to reveal exactly how they did it. Remember when you were a kid, young and innocent, and you had all these meaningful questions like, why am I alive? What's the purpose of all of this? What is this world we live in? And like most kids, you probably were ignored or got some superficial response that didn't really satisfy your need for answers. And so these existential questions typically get repressed in most of us as we grow older. Not in you though. Just like the unique imaginal cells in the caterpillar that can sense the newly emerging reality of the butterfly, you have a sense that there has to be more to life than what you're familiar with. That the grand scheme of things is much, much bigger than what we know and you just can't ignore it. So, where do these meaningful questions and feelings come from? Remember that individualistic software we spoke about? You know, the one that's preventing us from sensing the emergent state? Well, your questions about the meaning of life and the nature of existence actually come from a single point within you that's connected to a different kind of software. A tiny point of desire that's linked to a deeper level of reality. Kabbalists call this the point in the heart and they say that its awakening is the beginning of its development. But it starts out as just a point. It has no mass, no area, no volume. It has only potential, and it holds in it the entire DNA of our emergent state. But for now, you just feel it like an itch, an inconvenience, maybe even a sense of hope, something that's always there in the back of your mind, not letting you rest, something that's pushing you to grow and to discover. Now, every human being has that point within, but just like an evolving caterpillar, it lights up only in some people at first. They are the imaginal cells of the human network. And those who develop that point can also be called Kabbalists. They're just ordinary people like you and me who felt an awakening of that point in their hearts, but nothing could shut it off. So they began to nurture that point, connect with it, engage with it, and they learned how to create an environment where that point could grow into a new sensor a non-material organ that can perceive the emergent state of humanity. And over generations, they developed an empirical method, a science of how to nurture that point, and they documented their findings and discoveries. And like fractals in nature that have a repeating pattern, no matter how close you zoom in, they found that the emergent state, or in other words, the structure of the human network is also fractal. And they refer to this structure as the 10 Sephirot. This means that whether one person discovers it, or a group of people, or all of humanity, they all find that same structure. And every time another person develops their point in their heart and discovers that structure, it sends a ripple effect throughout the entire network, which accelerates the awakening of additional points of these imaginal cells that contribute to the evolution of humanity. So, when Kabbalists say that a person can change the world, they don't mean it as a figure of speech, they mean it literally. Bala Sulam, the preeminent Kabbalist of the previous century, wrote that if one is rewarded, he or she sentences themselves and the whole world to a scale of merit. They also found that the best way for people to develop their points in their hearts is to do it together. When people begin to inspire each other's points in their hearts, they mimic their emergent state of connection. And as a result, they develop much, much faster. So we've built an environment where you can do just that. And we invite you to connect, to become an imaginal cell, to grow that point and unlock your next level of development. Listen, if you feel this awakening now, don't let it go away. Embrace it, nurture it, grow it. So it's the end of the course, but a whole new beginning. Alright, so, hey man, my sound on? Yes. Alright, so basically, just to reiterate a certain part uh, of that clip, if you want to accelerate this development of yours, then there is a simple way to do this. So this is back 
um, to the question from before. Um, lost the name. The one that was asking about how to, how to do this. So I said I'll elaborate on that more, and here I am. I'm elaborating. So each and every one of you, again, back to the beautiful, high-quality drawings. So each and every one of you is in this world, like we said in the beginning, and you're interacting with the reality around you. But each and every one of you is actually already in your highest, purest, corrected state. And that is here, in a collective soul. It's not that you're a piece of that collective soul. It's not that you're here, okay, so you're here. No. You construct this entire soul within you. It, it's like a, a multi-dimensional image. Think of it that way. Every single part of that collective soul is built inside of you. All right? And this state is already in existence, this state of this collective soul. The collective soul is simply th that spiritual state. That's actually the, the means to it, you could say. So this is also connecting to, um, to Glad Gladitus Bob's question. Does Kabbalah imply a trinity or a duality or something similar to the Christian trinity idea? So I'm not familiar with the Christian trinity idea or with duality so much. But what I am familiar with, and what I can say that many religions are based on, well, all religions are actually based on Kabbalah. Kabbalah predates the main religions, uh, Judaism, Christianity, Islam. Uh, it predates them. It, it, it was before. And many of them are based on these principles that were taken down to a materialistic level. But basically, there is some kind of device which is very, very simple, actually. It's connection. That's it. So if you're in this world and, you're, and you want to construct this, this state of the collective soul within yourself, let's say that theoretically you could do it alone. It would be like um, being, being ill and then studying medicine to become a doctor to cure your illness. You know, most likely you won't make it before you become a doctor. Instead of that, there is a way to connect to that entire system and already get that remedy. And that way is through another person and another and another like we actually have right here, right now, each person locked up in their egoistic shell, which isn't a good thing and it's not a bad thing, it's just a thing, it's what it is, right? But if every one of these people, and it's preferable to start it with people that are like-minded, that also understand this, that also want this, right? So if every single one of you even the ones that are right here, right now with you, watching this show on YouTube, on Facebook, if every single one of you look not at this force that I want to achieve spirituality and I want to connect to it, it's good, it's, it's a good desire. But if instead you start looking towards each other and not just looking towards each other um, without any intention in mind, but that when you are forming this connection between you, you're doing it because by that you want to construct, you want to connect to that state of the collective soul, by that you're unlocking the most powerful force in reality. You're, you're opening infinite channels of light to flow through the entire system. So this entire structure of the soul of Adam HaRishon, it has the strength in it to connect every single person in humanity. And that's what it's destined to do, actually, at the end, eventually. But the practical way to start it is to 
simply connect with people that also want the same thing. So David's asking how many people are already connected to this soul and the answer is 7.8 billion. Every single person in humanity is connected, already connected to this soul. It's a collective soul. That state is already in existence. Only we're not wearing the right pair of glasses to see that. We're currently observing reality that's outside of us, remember, through this will to receive, in order to receive through this egoistic desire. If instead we take off the egoistic glasses and we put on these glasses of bestowal, then we'll find that this, this state is already here. It's already in existence. Thank you.